Hi guys, it's Daniel here, and today we're going to talk about a very famous problem from folklore, as far as I'm concerned. And it goes like this. Does there exist a polynomial that is a, a monic polynomial px with degree 5 with no integral roots, such that there exists, um, for all primes, p, there exists an x such that p divides p of x. So first, um, take a moment and pause the video and try to figure out, does there exist a polynomial, and if so, can you prove it? Now let's come back and I'll show you the solution. So the answer is there does exist a polynomial of degree 5 that satisfies all these conditions. And now to show this, uh, to prove this problem, let's first, um, let's first ignore this condition of degree 5 and just try to find some sort of example such that all, uh, all primes p can divide this polynomial. So first off, of course, the most obvious example might be, for example, px equals x or px equals any linear factor times some other polynomial. Unfortunately, we cannot have linear factors here because, again, it's monic and it can't have integral roots, so therefore there cannot be any linear factors. So all the factors that we have are going to be quadratic or higher. So the second thing we might think of is, well, since I don't really know how to deal with uh, divisibility in polynomials with degree 4, 3, 4, 5, 6, etc. Um, 2 is the most nicest because um, it has a very low degree. We might first try to consider only polynomials of degree 2. Now, bear in mind, in, in this case, since our polynomial is degree 5, we can't just have um, only degree 2 factors, but for now, let's, again, we're ignoring the degree 5 condition. So, if we have a polynomial that has x squared plus a or I probably say x squared minus a, make it a little nicer, um, as a factor, then what, what primes does x squared minus a cover? Well, let's see what happens when we set p to divide x squared minus a. Well, that implies that x squared is congruent to a mod p. Ooh, that looks like q. a mod p. Um, and here the brackets is my shorthand notation for for mod p, for mod p, oops, mod p. So um, just for less writing. Um, but anyways, this is equivalent to x squared is congruent to a mod p, which implies that a is a quadratic residue mod p. In other words, um, there exists an x such that x squared is congruent to a mod p. That's exactly what this says. So a is a quadratic residue mod p, and that's denoted as a over p is equal to 1. And this is called a Legendre simple. Um, and I believe that I made a video about this in a f past video. Um, I'm not, if, if I didn't, I'll make a video soon about Legendre symbol and the properties that it holds. But for now, let's, um, if you don't know, then um, go ahead and search online, but in, if you do know, or s search online for the other video, and if you do know, um, keep on watching. So, um, we have that um, p divides x squared minus a only when we can, only when a is a quadratic residue mod p, and if it is a quadratic residue, then we can find example of x, so it's an if and only if statement. So, um, let's let's draw that. Okay, so this covers all the p such that a is a quadratic residue mod p. So it doesn't cover all p, unfortunately. But can we add more factors so that everything, um, each term, is guaranteed to cover some of the p? Well, let's keep on going, and um, perhaps we can try um, x squared minus b. So if p divides x squared minus b, then that implies that um, b over p is equal to 1. Okay, so um, in the case that a over p is equal to negative 1 and b over p is negative 1, that's bad because then um, neither x squared minus a or next x squared minus b is able to cover uh, that, those types of primes, but um, if a over p is negative 1 and b over p is also negative 1. What does that imply? That implies that ab over p is equal to 1. Oops, is equal to 1. 
So if instead we also include p divides x squared minus ab, then this implies that ab over p is equal to 1. So if we do a polynomial of the form p of x is equal to x squared minus a times x squared minus b times x squared minus ab, then if a prime does not divide x squared minus a, in other words, a over p is negative 1, and it does not divide x squared minus b, then in other words, uh, b over p is negative 1, then therefore it must divide x squared minus ab because ab over p is equal to 1, in the case that the a over p and b over p are both equal to negative 1. And all we need to do left is to make sure that none of these give any integral roots. In other words, we just want to make sure that AB and AB are all not perfect squares, which is easy. Just consider, for example, A equals 2 and B equals 3. So now this polynomial um, satisfies our problem condition. In fact, it satisfies every single problem condition except for one, which is that the degree of P has to be 5, not 6. So unfortunately, this polynomial is not going to work. And in general, we won't be able to get any polynomial that works using this idea because it requires at least three factors that are um, that are cubes, or not cubes, that are quadratic, which gives a degree of at least six. So unfortunately, this will not work. So, of course, since we're working with degree five now, we have to have a cubic in. So we should probably analyze what um, what primes can divide some sort of cubic instead of just considering quadratics. So let's consider that um, the most simple cubic, which is of the form perhaps p of x equals x cubed. Um, sure. No, x cubed won't work because it has a linear factor. So x cubed uh, minus a, where a is not a perfect cube, times q of x. So let's see when p divides x cubed minus a. Well, this is not as easy of a problem because, in general, um, deciding whether a is a cubic residue mod p isn't that easy. It doesn't have the same as, as useful of a theory surrounding it as quadratic residues. So we might have to attack this problem in a slightly different way. And the different way that I'm considering is to prove Instead of that um, a is a cubic residue mod x cubed, that x cubed, instead, we try to prove that x cubed is bijective um, over mod p. In other words, if we plug in two different numbers, mod p, into x cubed, then we get two different numbers. And if this is true, then clearly a is a cubic residue mod x cubed because everything is a cubic residue mod x cubed. So um, if we instead prove that x cubed is bijective, then that's good because then every single uh, bijective mod p, that's good because then we can find an x such that p divides x cubed minus a. So let's go ahead and try to prove that x cubed is bijective. And the most common way to prove it is to sh show that if x cubed is congruent to y cubed, um, lowercase y, y cubed mod p, then it implies that x is congruent to y. So um, first, in order to solve this, we can, of course, factor it into x minus y um, times x squared mi plus xy plus y squared is congruent to 0 mod p. Now we assume, with, for the sake of contradiction, that x minus y is not 0 mod p. In other words, that x and y are different, and we want to um, arrive at a contradiction. So we get rid of this factor um, and we are left with x squared plus xy plus y squared is congruent to 0 mod p. Now this is actually very good for us because look what we have here. We no longer have a cubic but now we have a quadratic and we know how to work with quadratics. We can use um, quadratic residue theory or whatever that's called. So in this case, in order to use that, we complete the square. Now completing the square is nice because I will show you in a second. 
if we complete the square by first multiplying everything by 4. Um, this only works when p is odd, be careful, but in the case when p is 2, um, it's easy to make sure that there is a factor of 2 always in p of x. Um, so we only need to consider when p is odd. So uh, when, x, uh, when we multiply both sides by 4, we can complete the square to get 2x plus y squared is congruent to 3, oh, it's congruent to negative 3y squared mod p. I moved um, 3y squared over to the other side and complete the square. And now completing the square is nice because this, we have a y squared term, which means that when we divide both sides by y squared, um, everything becomes, uh, everything gets put into the square. So it's 2xy around negative 1 plus um, 1 squared is congruent to negative 3 mod p. And note that this is only valid when p does not divide y. However, when p does divide y, then it implies that x, p divides x as well, um, which gives the case that x is congruent to y congruent to 0 mod p, which we already um, took that case out over here. So um, we can divide both sides by y squared to get that 2xy to negative 1 plus 1 squared is equal to is congruent to negative 3 mod p, which implies that negative 3 is a quadratic residue mod p. Oops, it's equal to quadratic residue mod p. So um, this means that uh, this only doesn't give a contradiction when negative 3 is a quadratic residue mod p. In other words, when negative 3 is not a quadratic residue mod p, then that means that we should arrive at a contradiction. In other words, when negative 3 is not a quadratic residue mod p, then x cubed is bijective. And that means that there exists a p that divides x cubed minus a. So um, uh, all we need to do left is to take care of the case when negative 3 over p is equal to 1. We want to find an expression such that when that is true, then p must divide that expression. But this is something that we've already seen before in the case of x squared plus 3. Because when p divides x squared plus 3, this only happens when um, negative 3 over p is a quadratic residue. So if we take a step back and look at our final polynomial, we should get something like px is equal to x cubed. Um, let's choose a to be, say, I don't know, I'll do plus 2, um, because it's aesthetically pleasing in a second. Um, but if we take our polynomial px to be x cubed plus 2, and then this takes care of all primes that satisfy negative 3 over p is negative 1. In other words, negative 3 is not a quadratic residue mod p, because in that case we get that um, x cubed is bijective mod p. So this takes care of when negative 3 over p is equal to negative 1. And then we add on a factor of x squared plus 3, which takes care of the case when negative 3 over p is equal to 1. So in fact, um, both of these factors takes care of all primes p, which means that, um, of course, it doesn't take care of when p is equal to 2. Um, in that case, well, we can just uh, take a, we can just um, check when x is odd, then we get that x squared plus 3 is even. When x is even, then we get that x cubed plus 2 is even. So that means 2 also is taken care of. So this takes care of every single prime. Um, in other words, there exists an x such that p divides p of x for any prime p. And it is degree 5. It does not have any linear terms. Um, and are there any other conditions? I don't believe so. It has degree 5, which is good. So this satisfies all the conditions that we wanted to satisfy. So this is our polynomial, and we are done. Hi guys, Daniel here, and today we're going to do the Amy 1 problem number 15 of this year. So let's first take a look at the problem. Um, David has four 